how y'all doing? All right, we're gonna continue on with our uh, how to borrow a buddy's bike slash Mr. Duff Factor tribute series here. And uh, what did we do last time? Last time we uh, we did the pegs. I think this time we're gonna. What did we decide? We're gonna do the gears, aren't we? All right. Well, let's get in that garage and do these gears. All right. So first thing we gotta do is get this cover off. All right, I'll just kind of keep all this stuff together. Actually, I'm going to clean this up, but I'll keep it all together and clean that up before I put it back on there. So you see this right here is a like a lock washer. You got to bend that up somehow or another. I don't know what the professional way is to do it. I just get like a pry bar or something and tap it up. Now I see there, I got it all flattened out. I just kind of gently worked it back and forth with this screwdriver and a brass hammer. Got things kind of pushed out there. That's all in the clear. Now, opposite of this, it's bent there too, so I gotta do the same thing on the other side. All right, now for the tricky part. Got to get that thing loose. So one thing you can do is you can take an impact wrench to it and try to just hit it with that. Um, another thing you can do is you can have a buddy hold the rear brake to keep the back tire locked and then just hit it with as much torque as you can. Um, when I'm by myself, what I usually end up doing is putting the front tire in the corner of the garage, like right up, kiss it into the corner, and I stand on the brake and I lean over the bike and I hit it with, uh, with my wrench with maybe a pipe on it so I can get more torque. So we'll try the simplest thing first and we'll just work our way up until it uh, comes loose. All right, first attempt. I'm just gonna hold the brake with my foot, put a little bit of weight on the back tire and pull up. Not working. All right, second attempt. I got the jack handle off my AC Delco jack. Give me more torque. All right, get my foot on the brake. Put some weight on the back tire. Probably hold the front brake too. And pull on it. Oh, it's got some torque. Ah, oh, felt like it was maybe moving. I think it's moving. It's either moving or it's breaking into something in the transmission. I'm not sure which. Here, pull it out and get that a little bit more torque on it. I'm gonna look at the chain and see if I can see the chain moving when I do this. Yeah, the chain's moving. So I ain't doing anything, am I? Nope. All right. All right, for my next attempt, same as the last one, only well, I got the bike heading straight into that tire there, so ain't nowhere for these tires to spin. Let's give it a shot. All right, the back tire is spinning. I'm gonna try this sitting on the bike somehow. I'm gonna scoot all the way back on the seat, right? That's gotta be better. I'll hold the back brake. Well, hell. This would be a lot easier if I had friends. I think I'd rather have an impact wrench than friends, though. Alright, I just realized something. I'm an idiot. 
We should put the bike in gear. Put the bike in gear. There. Now let's try it. Well, the tire ain't moving now. Yeah, it is. Dang, it's turning the whole motor and the tire. Seriously. All right, the book says to get a friend to sit on it and lock the brake. <sighs> well, if you ain't got no friends. Here, maybe if I held the tire instead of the brake, I hold the tire itself. <laughs> All right, screw this. On break. There. Yeah, I know, I know. Should have used the right tool for the job to begin with. But not everybody watching this video has a good impact wrench. Now they all know why they need to go get one. <laughs> Alright, so this is the sprocket I got for Ferret Face's bike. It's a uh, 13 tooth. And uh, I think the one on there is going to be a 15 tooth. So, there it is. I'll put a link in the description, as always. Alright, now we got to uh, get the back tire off the ground and loosen it. Don't need to uh, bother remembering where it is, because that's going to change when we put a different size sprocket on there. But, uh, let's talk about something real quick. So a 400S has a 15 in the front and a 44 in the back. An E has a 14 in the front and a 47 in the back. So a little bit shorter gears. So one way to get that gear ratio is obviously just put the same size that the E has on there, but another way to get the exact same ratio is to put a 13 in the front. So we're gonna do that because it's cheap and it's probably temporary. Ferret Face may decide that he likes this gear ratio. If he does, then I can put a 1447 setup for him if he wants. And uh, if he wants to stick with this, that'd be all right. If he doesn't like 13, then he can just put the 15 back on there and be right back where he was. So main advantages of doing uh, just a 13 in the front versus a 1447 is uh, cost, um, labor, and uh, easy to switch back, easy to undo. The only reason not to do that, well, I guess there's two reasons. One is you might get some more chain wear, although with all steel stuff, I don't think that's going to be that big of a deal. Um, the bigger problem might be that the angle of the chain changes because this is a little bit shorter gear here. The chain's going to come down lower on the chain guard, and it might chew up this, uh, this guard right here a little bit. So Fairface is going to have to keep an eye on that, and if this is, in fact, causing a problem and getting chewed up in here because of this tiny gear, then uh, we'll, we'll get it fixed. But uh, lots of people do it, lots of people don't have a problem. So we'll give it a try. All right, got the wheel loose, so now I'll try to get this chain off this sprocket. All right, what I find is easier is just taking the chain off the back first. There. And when you pull it off, remember, Flat side goes out, non-flat side goes in. There's a difference. That's a big difference. Every time you go down one tooth on the front, that's like going up three teeth in the back. So this one's got 15, this one's got 13. That'd be like putting a, what's that, that's a 44? That'd be like putting a 50 on the back. put our retaining washer back on. And our nut. See our nut's got kind of a hollowed out side and a flat side. Flat side out. Now 
And we'll get our chain back on here before we get it really tight. Now let's talk about tightening this thing. So my manual says 80 foot pounds. Uh, Suzuki's manual says 79 foot pounds. The newer DRZs, I think it actually says 100 foot pounds. And this thing is notorious for coming loose. And a lot of people say that you should put some Loctite on there and then torque it down to 105 pounds. So I ain't real comfortable with the Loctite thing. I think I'm gonna try uh, just leaving the Loctite off, torquing it to 100 pounds and seeing if that gets it done. If it gets loose, then we'll do the Loctite. Main thing here is, keep in mind is like I said, this, this could be temporary. Ferret Face may not like this gear ratio, and uh, he, or, he, or he might want to try something else, or even if he does like it, then he might want to go ahead and swap this out to a 14 and then do a 47 back here so that this uh, chain guard right here doesn't get chewed up as much. So no Loctite. Um, if y'all got any, uh, any feedback on that, Appreciate it if you put it in the comments. Yeah, I'll show you all what I do to get a chain tight. So I'll put like a wrench or a screwdriver in it and I tighten it up and then I'll just make sure that these notches match the notches on the other side. So that's a that's a six here. Let's see if we can do a six on the other side and make it work. You want about three fingers in here when it's on the ground. So that's probably a little bit loose. I'm gonna put, try to get it at two fingers here and then I put it on the ground. Hopefully it'll be three fingers. All right, so I got that tightened up with my wrench in there. Loosen my wrench. Drop on the ground, see if the chain feels right, the chain tension seems right. Then we'll go ahead and tighten that sucker down to 100 foot-pounds. Alright, so that's more than two fingers, but not quite three fingers. I'm going to call that good. Alright, we'll get this torque down to 100 pounds. Probably have to go hold the brake here in a second. Yep, holding the brake. Putting some weight on the back. Now remember, some manuals say that this should be 80 foot-pounds or even 79 foot-pounds. So you're doing this at your own risk if you're going to take it to 100. I really do think that's what's best though to keep this thing from getting loose. Considering the history they got doing that. All right. Now we just got to then our washer back. So it's like we found it. Don't forget, if you need another angle on this washer, all you gotta do is ro roll it back a little bit. And we just need to Zip the cover back on and we're done. Oh yeah, don't forget to tighten this back wheel back down to 90 foot pounds. There we go, new sprocket. Should we tell him? I don't think I will. Let's just see if he notices. All right, there's the gears. Yeah, man, that pulls much better. All right, cool. Well, let's roll this bike on back to him. And, uh, you know, I'm not even gonna tell him I did the gears. I'm just gonna let him ride the bike, and if he notices, I'm gonna say, yeah, man, that's what happens if you keep your air filter clean. We'll see how that goes. Man, this thing is, uh, it's uh, riding good and it's looking good. Looking real good, you know, except for the uh, front fender, but that's just because DRZ 400s come with that stupid flappy front fender, and, it, and you can do about it. Well, there's something you can do about it on Ned's. I put on a different fender from an RMZ, but uh, anyway, you know, I, yeah, you all know where this is going, right? We're gonna have to do the front fender for Ferret Face, right? Let's just go do it. Next video, doing the fender. Thanks for watching the video. Be sure to subscribe 
like, and share. Those actions go a long way to help me out and encourage me to make more videos. For your convenience, you can be notified of new videos on Facebook, Twitter, or in the Hermit to Blog Android app, available on the Play Store. Links to all of them are in the description. Y'all have a good week. Over and out.